Friends, I'm not gonna lie to you, when we started filming this video, it was supposed to be about us trying weird Iraqi foods, like uh, cow head stew and uh, sheep's kidneys on a barbecue. But as it turns out, the food culture of Iraqi Kurdistan had a way bigger surprise for us. No, no, no. He said the same, he's, he's not accepting my money. <laughs> I was in the middle of paying and they told me not to pay. So in today's video, we ask you along on a journey to figure out why is food free in this part of the world. And if any of you is wondering what are two Northern Europeans doing in Iraq, then this is the shortest version of that story. We are Joe and Lizo. And about four months ago, we started the craziest journey from Europe to Japan in our home on wheels. And as you can probably tell by the title of this video, we have made it to Iraq. And today we ask you along to check out why is food free in here? Let's go. By now, we've spent about one month traveling in the Kurdistan region of Iraq. And our first contact with local food culture happened on the very first night we were in the country. I'll be honest with you, the whole first day in Iraq was a huge culture shock for us. And although we were extremely tired, I feel absolutely tired, and I just wanna go and grab a bite to eat in Iraq, our first dinner here. So we're gonna go ahead and look for a place. I remember seeing a street food stand selling boiled red peats and turnips. It looked quite unusual, so I asked the vendor if I could film him. And well, about 10 seconds later, he served us a portion of his boiled veggies. Yet, when I tried to pay for the food, he did this with his hand. A weird gesture that we had never seen before. Turns out that this gesture means your money is not welcome here. And although it felt weird not to be able to pay for our food, we carried on and thought to ourselves what a nice gentleman it had been and how good we felt as tourists. Since in most of the world, being a tourist means being a walking wallet. That was a nice welcome. We were looking for a restaurant. I just saw this street shop. I don't know why, but he did not accept our money. We tried to pay three times. He just said, no, no, it's a gift. Enjoy. That was so sweet. Such a nice welcome to Iraq. But still, the question why remained. I'll be honest with you. For a big guy like myself, a few boiled veggies can barely be called an appetizer. And so we continued our hunt for food and soon found ourselves in a small restaurant. We told the chef, it is our first evening in Iraq. What would you recommend us to eat today? And then asked him if maybe he could put together something very authentic that every tourist should definitely try. Our table was covered with various side dishes and as the main course, kebabs straight from the fire. We feasted on the delicious lamb kebabs and once we were so full that it was hard to move our bodies, we tried to ask for the check. I'm sure that many of you can already guess what happened next. What happened? What's happening? What happened? Why did you put your wallet away and run? They said we are their guests. They didn't ask, accept our money. It's crazy. It's thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. We feel so special. Believe it or not, I insisted on paying many times, but they simply did the hand thing again. It was our first day in a country, and what we experienced was something we never expected to see. And all of this in Iraq, a place that was supposed to be poor and full of terrorists, according to the media. Well, it was just the first day, we told ourselves. And maybe it's all just a big coincidence. As days went by, we started learning more and more about Iraqi Kurdistan. First, we tried to stay away from big cities. Instead, we discovered smaller towns and visited sacred places of different religions. But it really did not seem to matter if we were in a Muslim-owned bakery in Accra, <laughs> or a holy town of Lalish, that is the most sacred place for Yazidi religion. Everywhere we went, it was the same story. People were kind to us 
and either asked us to eat together with them or in case of that bakery, just wanted to give us some food to take with us. And every time we tried to lift their wallet, they would turn away their head and do the hand gesture again. No, no, no. <laughs> Such occasional acts of kindness kept on happening to us for the first two weeks of our travels in Iraq. We uh, drove on the wrong road and uh, a local gentleman was just helping us turn around and now he asked us for a cup of tea. Every other day someone would ask us for tea or in extreme cases bring us pomegranates and home-cooked food after seeing our little van parked on the river shores for more than a day. But little did we know, it was all about to change as we entered the two biggest cities of Iraqi Kurdistan. She's gonna get us both killed. First out of two was Erbil. It's the capital of this region and believe it or not, it's a very modern and safe city. It's a perfect mix of vibrant markets and beautiful streets. But what made Erbil special for us was not the food or beautiful streets, but the fact that we were able to meet locals who spoke perfect English and who were finally able to answer our big questions about local food and why is our money not accepted here. From a young man called Gamo and his friends, we heard how hospitality and kindness towards others is taught to them from a very early age and how it makes them feel good if they get to help other people. From another friend, Kozar, we heard more of a religious side of this kindness. As it turns out, there's a saying in Islam that goes something like this. A guest is like a groan on its receiver's head. Meaning that uh, the better you take care of your guests, the kinder person you are. But I guess the answer that spoke to us the most came from Saman. Saman is a Kurdish man in his mid-40s, born in Iraq, yet throughout his life he has lived a decade in Europe. After we told him about the kindness we had encountered, we just came to buy bread for tomorrow morning's breakfast and uh, the gentlemen don't accept our money. They're so kind. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you so he smiled and said that the Iraqi Kurdistan has one more surprise for us. And that surprise would happen in his hometown, Sulemania, and added that after we had been there, we would understand the whole meaning of his words. So before I tell you what Saman said, let's skip one week ahead. Tent after tent after tent, that's Salim Street, and that's the biggest street food uh, place in our city. Salim Street is probably the best known street food hub in Iraqi Kurdistan. Every evening this place becomes alive. Meats, salads, snacks and sweets. It's an amazing place to taste various local foods for cheap prices. We wanted to start our food adventure with some roasted beans with pomegranate molasses coating. They were delicious. Yet the biggest surprise came when we tried to pay. Yes, that's the best example of the your money is no good here. After the beans, we tried some boiled turnips. Well, I'll be honest with you, they taste okay, but there are better street foods out there. But once again, he said the same, he's, he's not accepting my money. I don't know, thank you. After that, a loaded chicken sandwich. First, the bun is loaded with the chicken, and then you get to fill it yourself from the colorful salad bar. And you guessed it, our money is no good here. I don't know how this is possible. Supas! Wow! After that, a delicious liver wrap made in such a fun and playful way. And even here, the same story. <laughs> I was in the middle of paying and they told me not to pay. And finally, the best chicken wrap of our lives. I'm honestly not joking. We did go back to the same place two days after and bought five wraps because it was so good. It's amazing! And I just have to add that the next day we left a huge tip for the guy. But of course the first evening he would not 
accept our money. We had eaten so much that we simply could not fit no more. And none out of those five places would not let us pay. It did not matter if the vendor was young or old, big or small. It was unbelievable. Before coming here, we thought such things would only happen in small towns. But that was not the case. We were on the most popular food street in Iraqi Kurdistan, a place that hosts many tourists daily. But it was still happening, and more than we had ever seen before. And at that moment, I suddenly remembered Saman's words. First he said that both reasons we had heard before were correct. Yes, Islamic faith encourages people to be kind to strangers. And yes, from an early age, such amazing hospitality is taught to the kids. But more than this, he said, that many Kurds know what it feels like to live through rough times. They know from their own experiences what it feels like to live as a stranger on a land that they can't call their own. And through their own hardships, it has now become part of their culture to offer free food to strangers, as it is the easiest way to show their kindness and hospitality without expecting anything in return. And as a traveler, I can't help but wonder how many of us would have something to learn from this. Because wouldn't the world just be a kinder place if we truly did to others what we wanted them to do to us? Thank you friends for joining us on today's adventure. If you like this story, hit the like button down below. It was amazing for us to see that food culture in this part of the world is so much more than a food. It's so much more than amazing tastes. It's about hospitality, it's about sharing, it's about kindness. And we just feel privileged to have been part of it. Next time, if everything goes as planned, we will continue our journey from Iran. Hopefully have Christmas with some Iranian family. That's the plan. That's what we're hoping for. We got no idea if it's going to work out. Until then, friends, <laughs> go ahead and check out that playlist up here to see the whole journey from uh, Europe until Iraq so far. And we will see you next time. Bye. Bye.